Okay, we are continuing with our Sicilian defense. Uh, I do not have camera on today. I am not cold or flu. Hopefully nothing more severe. Um, I'm going to be taking a, I'm actually going to be taking a COVID test soon. I think it's just a, but it's just I want to make sure if I'm, if I'm sick for a few more days, then, then probably we'll get it. Just in case. Um, okay, so we're going to continue on, um, so kind of going to uh, some of the main line um, stuff, well, at least what I count as main line, and I, because it's, uh, it, it is played um, quite often, um, I'm just going to create like a new chapter and then I'll organize it at the bottom here. Um, so we're going to start off with... Um, so the most common, uh, most commonly played is uh, is actually not the Marazzi bind because I find that the Marazzi bind, what tends to happen is that generally people of higher level tend to play Marazzi bind. Um, not a hundred percent sure why. Oh, maybe it's just because it's a very good positional um, variation. Because maybe the reason why the other, you know, like lower ranked players like to play some of the other variations because they're more aggressive. But the problem is that um, some of the other variations, they're more aggressive. However, there's no guarantee um, that you will potentially win. Now, I do know that there are some, I'll have to do um, research because I haven't played, uh, I haven't played like serious chess in you know, uh, almost 10 years. Uh, so I will have to take a look and see. There is supposed to be some sort of really attacking variation where when we castle our king on this side, that white has a really, really nice like attack that's going. But but the thing is that it has to be precisely done in a very like specific line, so uh, where it's very deadly for, for, for black. Actually, I have a feeling that that is one of the reasons why you don't see too many high-ranked uh, chess players like grandmasters playing the Sicilian, uh, the Sicilian dragon. Um, it's a lot of the time because of that attacking um, variation. Uh, so what I tend to see the higher-ranked players they tend to play kind of like the hedgehog or the knight or like they 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 play more having the bishop on e7 than having the bishop here. And from I guess from my understanding is because it's harder to attack when the pawns are um, I guess situated uh, in in this type of fashion instead. So so yeah. Okay. So um, so these are d four. Uh, D4 is, uh, is, this is like, this is what I would count kind of like the main line is um, I'm going to play, uh, white is going to play pawn to D4. And as I've mentioned before, in the dragon, you are always capturing on D4, regardless of um, even if the pawn is being supported by another pawn, you're still capturing because you are trying to not create a very uh, passive scenario. Um, like I mentioned before, you can technically, um, technically speaking, you can continue with uh, with pawn to g7. But uh, what I've mentioned before is I don't like it when um, I don't like it when my opponent has the pawn on d5 and I still have the pawn on c5. It just it just makes the position um, a lot more cramped for black, and then you don't really know where exactly this rook should be going. And um, and I know that you wouldn't consider this, but I just mean that um, uh, who knows? Some people who maybe don't know the, the 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 dragon that well, maybe they'll think that capturing on d4, um, you know, allows the knight to come to the center. Uh, so in this position here, um, now uh, this is actually very common because I believe that this is where. Uh, where black actually can decide, you know, are they going to go into the, into kind of like the hedgehog system, or are they going to go into, they can even go into the, I believe there is an opening with e5, I think, uh, here. Yes. What is it called? Oh, it's, uh, I believe, 
See, like in this position, you could you could play pawn to e6 and then um, get into a um, kind of like that hedgehog system. But there's also e5, and I believe, uh, oh, this is called the Lowenthal variation. Hmm. I'm not 100% sure what is the kind of like the idea behind um, playing this because it's it's definitely a lot different. Um, my opinion but you definitely have to make sure that you play d6 really quickly or else the knight's going to go to d6 so here pawn goes to d6 and then you need to try to chase that knight away but then um but but see from my understanding you allow this uh this hole on d5 but uh but i guess black doesn't really care about it Um, but yeah, so, but, but as mentioned, uh, G6 is what we would do in, um, uh, in, in the accelerated, um, dragon. Yes, my text is like dragon. Uh, okay, G6. Okay, so pawn goes to g6, um, and in this position, uh, I mean, there are multiple ways that that people can respond, but it's usually um, either knight to c3 or bishop to e3, just to give a support onto um, this, this knight. Okay, so um, in this position here, of course, as we mentioned before, if white wants to go into the... Uh, into the um, Marazzi by they would just play pawn to c4 here. However, um, we're going to be looking at something uh, different uh, to a. So in this position, if pawn goes to g6, uh, I would say knight to c3 is very common. Uh, bishop goes to g7, uh, bishop goes to e3, and now knight to f6. Um, okay, so in this variation here, um, it's not very common, but it can be played. But for example, like Wayne, why can't white uh, push the pawn up here at the moment and chase away the knight? Uh, cause the, I mean, the other knight's just gonna take it, like the knight on on c six. Good. So if white still wants to have the the idea of pushing the pawn to e five, what do you think white should do in this position to achieve? Oh, um, I don't know, maybe, uh, uh, F4 looks yeah, F4. possible. F4, F4 yeah. is possible. Yeah. Um, or I don't know, most of the other moves look like they're. They lose a tempo. Um, maybe or maybe uh, maybe knight def, maybe knight def three. Okay, mm -hmm. f three, but then you bring your knight back where, where it used to be. What about removing the defender of the square on e? Um, yeah, okay, so I guess bishop to uh, bishop to uh, b five. Okay, or what about just capturing right away? On c6. But you uh, bishop b5 bishop. doesn't really work. No, you're, well, it doesn't really work very well because that pawn is still there. Uh, no, I, I guess you could just take immediately, but taking immediately, um, yeah, kind of, I don't know. It, well, in this position, it it's pretty, I mean, uh, I think it's not bad for, for white, but in this position, there are multiple different ways that we can actually respond to however uh when i was learning this variation um when i was learning this variation uh it was actually encouraged to sacrifice sacrifice mm. um however i understand that to anyone like i'm even i'm looking at the lee chess database like up until 2000 and mm -hmm. um it's actually better to play the knight d5 variation um there is a higher winning rate. Um, there's a higher winning rate than just moving the knight back to g8. 
so, but it is really up to you. And the thing is that you kind of can't stop this unless you want to, like, the only way that you would be able to stop this variation, by the way, is if you go into the classical dragon. If you go into the classical dragon, you should have played d6 at some point earlier on, right? To not allow, um, to not allow e5. So, sure. um, so in this position, like, you do have to kind of decide what, which one do you, uh, like more, but I do want to kind of go over uh, some of the uh, some of the variations um, where we do sacrifice because then that can actually give you um, uh, it can give you a choice to choose right between just going back to g eight or um, actually going for it. Now in this position here, um, I will kind of uh, explain. So one of the reasons why. Um, we go into this variation is because we are only one move away from castling, which is kind of, it's a pretty, it's kind of a good thing. Uh, like at least in this specific case, especially when the knights are traded off. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I do believe that the computer does not like the sacrifice if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, but keep in mind, you know, gambits, um, I believe a lot of gambits the computer does not like, um, you know, just like sacrificing a pawn, uh, because if they play very, uh, you know, very specific, um, and the very exact, you know, best continuation, then yes, this might not be the, the you know, gambits or this line might not be the best. However, you're, you are playing a human, um, so you are trying to kind of like take advantage of the fact that, um, you know, that they uh, can make a mistake uh, just being uncomfortable in a position. Uh, yeah, okay, so knight goes to d5, and of course in this position, if white does not accept it, I mean, I don't know. If he doesn't accept it, then I'm pretty happy, I guess, because, you know, now this, 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 uh, this bishop we're being threatened to uh, to capture this pawn on e5. So he's kind of, uh, I mean, he could play something like bishop d4, but, um, but yeah, I think I would just probably maybe castle or maybe even just trade off and then maybe get my queen here. Uh, there's just some, some kind of ideas um, in this scenario. But generally speaking, uh, of course, capturing and then capturing the pawn on d5. Okay. So in this position, I know it looks like that white might have a lot, especially since now they also capture on d5 with, um, with a tempo, right? But there is actually mm -hmm. a lot of reasoning behind this, uh, behind this move. See, it's so interesting. Like I'm looking here right now and um, it's so interesting that the, uh, after rook goes to b8, it's very, very close in percentage. Which, uh, before it was actually, before it was, um, uh, I guess when they're cow counting every single variation, it was saying how it was 49% win, uh, it was like 49% win rate for white and 45% win, win rate for black. But now mm -hmm. it switched. And now um, after rook to b8, it is 48% win rate for white and 46% win rate for black which is really good actually just being 2% off um that's that's really not not bad for a black opening um mm. well at least for a black opening bad, um to be a little bit sure a little bit down even though i have i have heard i have heard um that the scandinavian is is a pretty good black opening um it's when it's when like e4 uh, d5 and you get your queen out really really early um but of course of course if you don't know what you're doing in that opening then your queen is just harassed on the board however if you do know what you are doing then it should be fine it should be good uh okay so rook goes to b8 um so in this position of course uh let's uh let me ask you um just so that we can take a look at uh, all of the different variations. But what are some moves you see for white that you would consider? 
Uh, of course, Rook to B8 has to be played. It is forced upon. Can't do anything else other than, like, you will lose material, right? This is unprotected. Mm -hmm. This is unprotected. Um, yeah, these two squares are unprotected, so you can't even move your bishop out of the way to protect your rook. So rook b8 has to be played. So in this position, what are some options for white you see if you were playing black and you were calculating? Uh, castle. Okay, castle. Is one. Um, you could also do... Uh... Uh, you could also do um, uh, rook to b1, maybe. Yeah, yeah, rook to b1. Uh, you could do uh, bishop to d4. Okay, yeah, bishop to um, d4. Uh, you could do, I guess, uh, b3. I guess, yeah, b3. Um, let see, what else? Uh, I guess you could go uh, bishop b5, maybe? Uh, yeah, okay, sure, bishop b5. Um, I mean, those are, those are, geez, what else? Uh, those are the ones that I can see that won't lose material immediately. Uh, maybe well, one of the variations, I guess, would be um to also look and see if if white's greedy and captures the pawn on a seven. Oh, I didn't even consider that. I didn't even consider capturing the pawn. Oh no, 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 it's it's not a very good uh line for white. Um, it's um... it actually becomes a winning, it's like. Higher percentage for for black actually. Bishop takes a seven. Uh, I mean, it's. I, I guess it in the short term it doesn't lose any material. Um... Yeah. No. Uh. Yeah. Exactly. Um. But that's the thing that I feel like a lot of. Um. But the thing is that even I remember when I was playing this variation. Um. I didn't have too many people capturing on a seven because they were kind of like. Oh, I already have the, I already have like the pawn on d five, right? That's um that that you sacrificed. So, like capturing on a seven, an isolated pawn. A lot of the time, they start thinking, right? Oh, well, a seven is an isolated pawn, so why not defend the pawn on b two, right? Because they're already up material at this point. So, um, it is commonly yeah. that a seven does not get captured, but it's definitely something to, of course, take a look at. Um, I think there's one other move that I would uh, definitely consider, um, which is just looking, eyeing at this pawn. Maybe you can figure out uh, what exactly I mean. Uh, you could go, yeah, you could go, uh, you could go bishop c4. Yeah, I bishop guess. c4. And a lot of the reasoning, by the way, behind bishop c4, it's to threaten checkmate, but it's also to like put the bishop back to um, b3. So you don't like ruin your pawn structure or anything like that. So that's kind of like a, a potential idea. And I believe bishop c4 is the best move for white, actually. Really? Yes. Bishop it c4 and then play because... bishop b3. Uh, well, if if Ooh. I play e6, there. Yeah, we're, we're gonna go into some um, some lines. Uh, I mean, it just it just seems like it just seems like you're. Uh... I mean, I guess I guess black is forced to ca uh, castle instead uh, of. I just realized if bishop of, goes. Um, yeah, if bishop goes to c four, we can just castle, and then if they play bishop b three, we have bishop b seven, and then we can win the pawn on g two. So, like, that's the thing that this position you sacrifice you sacrifice a pawn, but you make things a little bit hard for your opponent. There's no guarantee, of course, that you will for sure win as black in this variation, but it. Like, I I don't know about you, um, but some people, they purposely sacrifice pawns because they mm -hmm. like playing down. Because, um, how can I explain? Um, it's, it, there's something about, like, you know, when you're losing, like, even when I start losing, for some reason, I start thinking more. I don't know why. 
even though it should have been the other way around. It should have been like thinking four before I made a big mistake. But, um, but sometimes people, they purposely sacrifice a pawn because they know that they play better down a pawn, you know, knowing that they already have a disadvantage. So they start playing more aggressively. Yeah, so there are, there are some people, um, there are some people like that. I'm not, but I don't mind. I, I haven't played like so many times this variation. However, when it is played, um, it is quite fun, um, uh, quite fun to play. Okay, so uh, let's, let's go over uh, some of them. I think uh, let's just go over kind of like the, the greedy, um, the greedy variation. Uh, which is sure. takes a seven. Uh, just I just want to move I'm just writing the uh, the eight, eleven bishop take. I just wanted to make sure that um, this this uh, chapter only affiliates with bishop takes a seven. So I just want to make things a little bit more sure. Um, just so that not all the variations are cluttered in one. Um. And one, if you remember one of our, uh, one of the first games that we looked over, which was like that world, uh, championship, uh, it was, it was Karpov versus Yasser Sarawan. And I remember looking pretty recently because I got a new student and the amount of variations in that game, it's like, I, I couldn't even recognize, you know, like what are the main, main line moves of the game and which ones weren't because of mm -hmm. just how cluttered it is. But I am actually, I do really want to make a note to Leech us and encourage them to uh, have different colors for different uh, variations. Like for example, for my draw book, um, uh, for my draw book, uh, actually, bring it up and show you. Share my screen. Okay. Uh, why? Oh, that's why. Okay, why is this taking so Oh, there you go, it opened. Oh gosh, I can't oh, wait. I, don't... I can't wait until I get my parts for this computer because this computer Ugh. Gosh, I can't even open up an Adobe program, uh, an Adobe PDF, without it lagging. I, that's weird. Um, no. Okay, can I Even go Adobe. down? I just wanted to show you, just like the layout, how, um, because I don't have a subscription. Oh gosh, no, I don't want. Is an Adobe? Um, free. Oh, okay. I guess it's not letting me open up uh, PDFs. Um, so uh, Adobe Reader is free, but Adobe, or at least it used to be. I don't know. I use, I actually do use free software for that. Um, but uh, I okay. think that was Adobe. I think that was an Adobe editor. I don't know which one, but oh, okay. Uh, Adobe editor is definitely not free. Um, that's um, fine. I have it.
Man, this computer is just being so weird. Maybe it's like the sharing screen. But... Oh, did I not download it? Okay, I'm sorry. It's on my other computer. And I, since I can't open, um, I can't show you. But, but my point was that like I'm making a book right now um, on draws and like with my even alternative variations, what I've been doing is because, um, you know, in some books when uh, there's alternate uh, variations and uh, sometimes you can't tell between like what's the main line and what's the variation, or maybe there's only a very small uh, difference, which is maybe like slightly, like one thing is like slightly bolder but what I did was I just made sure that when you're looking at alternate lines, that um, number one, it's a different color, and number two, it's also italic, you know, so that people know that this is what we're focusing on. But if you want to look at alternate mm -hmm. lines, this is it. So it would be great if uh, if Leeches added that. Um, just change up the colors. Uh, like, why not? They have, like, this green, right? They really like this green on their site, so why not have the alternative... Mm -hmm lines as green or something. Um, okay, so bishop takes a7. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bishop takes a7, um, and now in this position, uh, we can play uh, rook takes b2. So bishop takes a7, uh, I believe that one of the reasons why this is not a very good uh, decision is because this is not a very good trade since white is taking uh, an isolated pawn, which could be weak in the future, right? And now black is able mm -hmm. to um, to actually capture, um, uh, what do you call it? And then they get to capture the pawn on b2, which will in return uh, create like isolated pawns. Now, of course, keep in mind that, yes, there is going to be somewhat of an advantage of, like, white having this pass pawn. Um, however, the thing is that, as you can see, um, the king is not castled, and there is actually quite a few variations um, that are uh, quite, like, that can be quite deadly for, for white. So, um, before we talk about anything here... Um, what are some moves that you see for white that can be played? So rook takes b2 has been played right now. The pawn on c2 is in danger. Uh, what do you think should could be played? Uh, um... Oh, uh, I guess... Uh... Maybe bishop d3? Yeah, okay, yeah. Maybe? D3. Yeah. Maybe. Protecting the pawn on c2. Uh, can you still castle in this position? Uh, yes, yes, you can. Yep. I guess you could do that. Could you do that? I, that's you not. Could... No, I don't know why you would do that. You could, but. But I think, uh, yeah, but I think castling in the direction where the king is open might just be. It seems, uh, it just seems bad in general. I think if you castle, you lose the pawn on h2 anyway. I don't know. It seems bad. Um, I think, uh, I think the bishop on, uh, on a7 is in danger right now Could after be. like maybe queen c2 or so, eight, yeah. oh, sorry queen c7 yep yep or or if you think about it um if this queen wasn't here what could be um even deadlier oh well uh queen a5 of um, course the queen is there but but i just mean that um it, no, no, like we could a... think about uh like yeah, queen a5 it. would be good. You could do like e you could do like e2 or sorry, e6. Yeah, e6. Uh, to maybe get rid of it. Um 
But yeah, uh, exactly. Actually, that's the only thing I I can see that would definitely do that. Um, I I do. But like it's PC it's still pretty good. Well. It's. I do like um, BC seven as well because it uh it kind of puts a lot of different puts a lot of things, things. in the uh, in the in the target. Yeah. Um. So since the bishop is in danger, and since that other pawn is in danger, I guess you could do like bishop. Bishop d4. Yep. Bishop d4. Um, and I think we still have to be kind of careful. I can't remember um, if Rook c2 is poisoned. It might be. Rook takes c2. Why would oh, that it, be poisoned? It might. No, actually. Uh, second. Because, uh, if Bishop goes to d4, um, what we just have to take a look on is if bishop goes to d4 i'm pretty sure that we can capture we just have to be very very careful so um especially when your piece has moved really far away from your other pieces that is definitely one thing in mind that you need yeah, to just, always yeah. be aware of however um as long as you know that you have this safe square this one mm -hmm. then you know for sure that your uh that your rook won't uh, be in trouble. And also, the thing is that, um, yeah, so in this position, pretty sure rook takes c2. I don't see anything necessarily bad here. Um, after rook takes c2, uh, I can't even necessarily think like this is, you know, this push isn't very good. Um, moving the king to d1 is not a really good idea because I would be pretty happy about that. Um, okay, Bishop D three is the is the only thing that I can see that is um, that is okay here. Bishop goes to D three. Rook goes to C six. This looks pretty good. Pretty good for Black, yeah. Um... Yeah, like really, really good. Um, okay. I'm actually kind of curious in this position after rook takes c2, what does the computer think? Uh, the computer thinks it's still slightly better for white, but slightly. I wonder why. No, slightly. Uh, no, it's no. Slightly. It's point. like plus zero. Yeah, it's like point. Uh, for me, it switches between uh, point 0.3 and point 0.5. So. Uh, I th I think it's point five of the isn't really on. better, except maybe, but it it's uh, but like it might just be the same, the same. Uh, it's actually pretty drawish, right? Like point three. Yeah. It might just be the same, uh, the same advantage that White has from the beginning of the game still. Right. You know? Um. Like like white has not improved their position from the beginning of the game in this situation. Oh, uh, although the uh, computer does like e six in this position. Yeah, I uh, I I kind of like e six in this position. I guess like one of the things is that the, our bishop on g seven and our bishop on c eight isn't really um, playing right now, but. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I don't know. I, I we're like one move away from one move away from castling. I guess maybe e six. E six is interesting. Um, oh. we'll have to take a look at queen to d six. But I think that allows queen a five. So that could actually be very very scary for. Yeah, actually, you know what? E six and I. That's the thing with this variation. Of course, if white plays absolutely correctly, then it would either just be you know like equal or better uh slightly better for white but the thing is that here with pawn to e6 it's so easy to mess up in this very like e6 is actually you'll you'll notice in other variations because we will go back we will be looking at other very variations other than bishop takes a7 um mm -hmm. but with uh with pawn to e6 there's always some sort of uh problem that can occur in terms of queen goes to d6 queen a5 and um, at least the king won't be able to castle um, at that point, yeah. and then you could get True. your queen to d2, and, oh, uh, well, your rook's in danger at the moment, but, okay, the check is still played. 
Um, sure. Like for example here. No, no. I mean, check. you can still do, yeah. Rook. Oh, I. And just... then, and then actually, like rook to rook to c six actually I... still seems. Yeah, rook to c six looks good, but I wonder what about uh, yeah, it doesn't like my doesn't. I'm surprised. Why doesn't it like my rook d two move? Maybe it's because. Uh, maybe because of bishop, bishop d6, maybe? Why, why? Bishop to b6, and what other? Oh, it's rook c1. Wrong. Oh, oh, rook c1, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, that's, I would have missed that, actually. Oh, that's insane. I, that's so funny, you know, why, uh, well, I mean, it's not funny if you actually, this happened in your game, uh, but I mean, it's because completely forgetting about the fact that you, uh, don't have castle. Cat castle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and rooks, rook to, yeah, if you allow rook to c1, I mean, it's checkmate. Yeah. So, rook to c8 is checkmate. There are some problems. Uh, yeah, if rook goes, excuse me, if rook goes to d2, rook goes to c1, you'll have to play like a move like queen a8, which is very, very passive, and then just yeah. doesn't, I don't know, uh, It it's like why give your opponent um, any type of chances when you can just play like rook to c6 here. It's just for me, I guess, it's so hard to take away your rook off of the second rank, you know, when your opponent... Mm -hmm has given it to you previously. Um, so that's like my my thought process. Like, can I keep this rook oh. still here? I mean, I, I get it, but um, I feel like you can, like there's, there Very are a later. lot of missing pawns in the middle of like white's, white's side of the board. I feel like there's a lot of opportunity potentially to, to yeah, now you can just castle, right? Yeah, canceling. Yeah. Really. Okay, so by the way, there are better variations, but and there's like severely better variations like queen to d2 however i feel like in an over the board game like just being a little bit worried about my king or something maybe i would just castle and it's still winning it's still like negative 4.5 so compared to oh, negative wow. 7 that is a lot yeah, it is a lot <laughs> negative but, 7 but, is a lot a lot though um uh, yeah but negative but negative oh now it's switched to negative 5 versus no, sorry, that's a different variation. To d five. I mean, I feel like I feel like once you get to once you get past like negative four, it's like I'm not I'm not sure that like I I don't know how much more you really need. Yeah, exactly. That's right? what I mean. Uh, well, that that's what I was saying. That it really depends on the scenario of of like the mood that I'm in. Um, like how worried I am in this position about the queen being on b8 or something like that, right? It really just depends on, um, and it also really depends on, uh, like, um, how much time you still have on your clock, right? Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of factors, like why um, I might castle here instead of playing queen to d2. Because, like, once you've castled, you know that this king cannot do anything. Uh, he cannot castle, but I guess I guess maybe the idea is that you play queen two d two now. Um, we're maybe thinking about even I don't know. Maybe we're even thinking about oh, that's really interesting. Queen to d two, and then the computer found oh, where did that variation go? Okay, the variation left. He doesn't like bishop a6 it was kind of funny bishop a6 was uh was a variation that he was at least on my end oh maybe apparently it's, gone it's a trap i guess it would be a trap right um, yeah yeah oh yeah it's it's a trap just in terms of like oh okay you capture and then you'll lose your bishop and your rook uh well not lose your bishop but it would be a trade for the bishop but but, but winning the rook at least yeah so i don't know here in this position i think I think this is a pretty confident, uh, there are so many different things that you can play. You can play queen to d2, you can play queen to d5, mm -hmm. castle, um, I mean, as long as your, I guess, 
rook is on the c file you should be good um but yeah actually i i think i like queen d5 five or queen i like queen d2 a lot um, very aggressive i guess five it is. is also good um queen d5 or castle okay well let's let's take a look at uh some other variation because sure um because who knows maybe maybe they won't uh give up this pawn maybe they won't give up this pawn uh um, this okay uh, and they won't play bishop D no it's just like i'm just looking at different options right so let's take a look at uh maybe bishop c4 here or bishop d3 okay let's do bishop d3 sure. first because it does actually protect the pawn Okay, so if the bishop goes to d3, this is where you should always remember that this bishop is defending this pawn. Well, not anymore. It's not. not anymore. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, when it was on f1, it was defending the pawn on g2. However, it is not anymore. Mm -hmm. So in this position, you could play uh, bishop to b7. Uh, now, it doesn't stop there because, of course... Um, mm -hmm. Of course, the the queen can move somewhere to attack the rook, right? Or do some sort of counterattack. Um, sure. However, of course, if they don't do a counterattack, then it's just it should just be better for us. So let's say if they play like queen two c five here, uh, we can just play bishop takes g two. Um, and I'm sure. Pretty happy. Oh, that's a that was a terrible move though. Yeah, that would be a terrible move sure. moving the queen there right um it's uh i wouldn't uh they're they're all bad that's the thing they're, they're all, all bad they're they're like they're uh it's well, pretty like even queen d4 is not very good right so, really that's yeah that's the move that i was thinking about um yeah. but i guess that's not i guess like after what queen to b uh, queen b6 maybe oh you can't that play move queen. kind of loses oh you're right sorry I know. uh i guess you could just like you can just move that uh you just move the rook back right to like uh, uh b5 or they're they're all defended oh uh, you're right they're all defended so okay, what's then... the reason why this is so bad I just need uh oh i guess you just i guess you can just i uh, or um i guess you can just uh um hmm. Actually, what is the uh... so you want? This so I was, I was thinking you want this bishop to protect uh, like the rook, uh, but it has to like you have to make a move first, and then we'll be able to defend the rook with your bishop. You have to make a move first, and then you can defend the rook with the bishop. Um. Like it would defend, it would defend the rook. Like if you were able to capture on e5, obviously the bishop but it's should be like defended. like d6. But if you so play what? d6, d then the then your rook, you have to make a more forceful move. Uh oh, queen a5. Yeah, queen a5. Queen so a5 makes sense. So basically, yeah. in this variation, any time that the queen gets off of like this line. Um, there's always queen a5 options, like, I mean, at least while the king has not castled. Um, the queen goes to a5 here uh, in this position. I mean, if pawn goes to c3, then the rook's not even in danger. Um, and there's, like, it, things get even worse on that side because, you, of course, you'd capture with the bishop, uh, not with the queen. At that point, I'd be like, I don't care about queen traits, like, we gotta pounce. Uh, we gotta pounce. Uh, I don't know, like, who, uh, like this position is just absolutely horrible. Uh, yeah, you probably really don't even want to yeah. know the percentage rate of 
Like, I how 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 did even White manage to win even a few games in this? Uh, well, I mean, Black had to blunder something. Probably, but yeah. um, yes. uh, I didn't even I I didn't even think about putting the king in check. I feel dumb. It no, was no, such no, a no, common don't. tactic. No, no, no. It's uh, I think I. Uh, just remember that it's uh, it's really common in this specific variation. Very common to think about queen to a5. Because keep oh, in I mind, know. just keep in mind in other variations um, in the dragon, um, you, like I have mentioned to you before, you either develop your queen here, here, or here. But a5 yeah. isn't always as popular. I would say that queen c7 is more popular to develop the queen than actually a5. Um, because, you know, if you move your queen to a5, a lot of the time, like, your queen could potentially get harassed, like, with bishop to d2 and stuff like that. So, um, but yes, in the dragon, just remember that queen a5 is always um, a potential possibility. And as you mentioned, that it, in it, it's a common tactic in a lot of different openings, right? Like, outside of the dragon. It oh, doesn't yeah, have yeah, to be I, the dragon. Um, no, I see it in tactics all the time. I I just feel feel dumb. Like I even I even mentioned Queen A five several times today, like during during this yeah. lesson. So I don't know why I wasn't thinking about it. Uh yeah, so you're pretty bad at five. I should continue. I should take this is really this is not good for white at all. Oh, it's so bad. No. no. <laughs> I mean, that, such a bad position. I mean, that's why you probably understand that not too many people go like, not too many people go into that line, but it is still important to, um, and see, like, isn't this a lot more interesting than just moving your knight to g8? Like, isn't this yeah. so much more uh, interesting, yeah. like sacrificing the pawn, you're down a pawn, but now you got your adrenaline, like, your adrenaline going, because... I don't know because you're down a pawn and now you have to find ways to win and um and stuff like that uh okay so bishop uh bishop c4 is a potential a potential thing to take a look at um uh however i believe yes. so after bishop c4 the I one thing guess. that you do need to understand is that your rook might look like uh your rook like the kind of like the idea about bishop c4 is um to try to trap the the rook yeah it seems like... if you if we castle our rook will get trapped the bishop. yeah but but if you just take on c2 like doesn't that oh careful 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 take on c2 then why was bishop c4 played um Uh, bishop c4 was played to actually why yeah so how are we going to defend you mean on C2? Um, uh, not C2. So, uh, well, kind of. At the moment... Oh, you uh, mean on F F7. F7. On F7. Yeah. All right. Yep. Uh, I forgot. Okay. No worries. Um, how are we going to defend? Yeah, that's a good... I guess... Uh, oh, um, what about... I guess we could just do E6 first. Maybe let's see. E6. Yep, e6. E6 is uh, because if you castle, there's you you have to do a forceful move right now, right? Otherwise, um, the bishop's gonna go to b3. And to be honest, I did I did look at the computer, and interesting enough, if you castle, it's it's not a big advantage for for white. It's a slight advantage, like it's um. Mm -hmm. However, like if you have an option to be in the negatives, like why get get into a positive but it, it is quite interesting right. to see um 
uh, to kind of see like why does uh, d why does white actually or, or why does the computer not mind so much that the bishop uh, that the rook gets trapped by the bishop but it's better to to just play a pawn to e6 here so if mm -hmm. pawn goes to e6 of course there are different uh, moves um, we know that if the queen steps off of this diagonal uh, not diagonal what am i saying uh this this line then queen a5 mm -hmm. is, is going to be in play so you know um it actually becomes really really bad by the way becomes in my opinion becomes really really bad because after queen a5 i wonder if you can even consider capturing this pawn first before you win the bishop so for example uh you know the king moves away i wonder can we capture on here before we capture on seven we capture um... on seven first. oh bishop takes queen oh it's because of queen c5 Never mind. I missed that move. Okay, scratch that. Just capture the bishop and be up a bishop. Or, sure. or it doesn't even. Uh, I guess. I guess they could still trap, try to trap the rook. But I mean, at that point, you would just get two pieces. Like I, I wouldn't even be worried about my rook at that point. Um, or I would just go back, and attack this pawn again, um, to try to protect my rook. But I'm also not even that scared because even if my even if my rook uh, even if my rook ends up getting trapped, I can just do rook takes b3 and then have two bishops for the rook. And if you remember, two bishops for the rook. Um, and if you remember, two better, bishops yeah. for the rook are really is is one of the best two pieces. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it makes sense. Um... Position, but. Uh, yeah, queen takes bishop b3 and then um, queen a5. And actually, and that... just go back in threatening bishop takes e5. Oh, that's right. Uh, I mean, the rook is trapped, I guess, technically. But, um, like, how is, how is that? How is white going to actually capture it? I don't know. Um, yeah, no, at this point, it's hard. I guess it would just be, it would just have to be something like, yeah, I mean, it is really tricky. Uh, good point, because um, I guess we always have a chance to play queen a3 to defend it. So even if pawn goes to f4 um, or something uh, in this position, um, actually, actually, the computer Seems... came up with a really cool idea to play bishop f8 here. Ooh, that's nice. Really, really nice. That's really good. Um, there's also like, uh, there's also like, I mean, this this really opens up the, the the king on the on the on White's in White's position. Like it looks like I can't help but feel like there are, I don't know, like bishop to a six options that could be pretty bad for White yeah. as well. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh pretty pretty bad. Okay, so bishop c4. I mean, I don't even know what else really to consider. Uh, maybe castle, but castle is kind of doesn't seem. <laughs> I like I don't get good. that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Castle doesn't seem for me. It like makes more sense. Bishop d3, bishop c4, and bishop d4. Kind of trying to get the bishop back involved in the game and stuff and. Yeah, the the computer thinks bishop d4 is the uh is the move. Yeah, for me it shows that it's equal, but to be honest, I think I would rather play black. It just seems like black has a uh, like a lot more. I I know that like this bishop isn't developed and this bishop is kind of like blocked off, but this bishop's still doing a lot. It's putting pressure here. Um I mean next move like queen c7 is even potentially possibility but yeah bishop d4 i just mean yeah bishop d4 just rook takes c2 um you get your uh now it's equal but you have your rook on the c file and stuff and i just think that there's more chances to be honest i mean zero, uh like uh, zero is better than you get when you're in the opening like when you first start 
Like white's white has lost their advantage. So this is seems pretty good. Okay, so let's uh, let's. I'm going to switch. I'm going to create a new chapter in the study, and we're going to be going over. Um, uh, not bishop takes a seven. Which one should we do? Maybe bishop c four. Well, bishop c four, I guess, is the is the absolute main line. Um, let's no do question. like b three. See, do b three because b three seems. Uh, actually, what do you think is more natural, rook b one or b three? defend the pawn uh rook okay oh um oh you mean of those two yeah out of those two like which one should we do first in this position i don't know i think rook b1 is a little bit more natural uh yeah, actually yeah, that's fine i mean i mean rook, rook b1 mm -hmm. you're right if 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 a person knows um how to play against the um uh, sorry, uh, uh, if, pe if people know how to play, know know how to play against the fiend Keto bishop, they would move the rook, right? If they although, although honestly, in this position, like, I kind of want to just castle as white to protect okay. that. Yeah, we'll, protect we'll, that we'll go over that. But too. that's we'll, not we'll one of the two over. options. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go that's over not one of the it. two options you're presented. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. Well, we'll we'll still go over it. I I just want uh was just. Uh, let's do rook b let's do rook b1 and i'll go very actually that's really interesting there's an option to keep the position instead of going nah um nah i think it's just better to go right from the beginning and just play out the, the... um sure okay um i'll play white and you'll play black okay And then here, I think you do this. Yep. And nope. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, I've already forgotten what we do at this point. Um, yeah, you just develop. Oh, wait, no, I think it's a, there you go. Yeah, knight of six, yeah, because remember Sorry, that I don't know why I forgot that one. That's part of the standard dragon opening. Yeah, because we, we're just taking our time with moving the d-pawn, and then this is where um, we go into this variation. Yep. And he, I think he pushes, yeah, at that point, and then I go here. Mm -hmm. Um... And in this position, I take, and then the queen takes, and then rook B8. that's right. Yeah, and then we were uh, rook b1. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, um, so rook goes to b1, and we have, okay, so now that, now that things are potentially defended, there are some um, ideas here that, gosh, there's like so many different nice ideas actually after rook one. Um, what do you uh, think we well, there's a, consider? Uh, well, there's queen c7, I, like I think, yep. which seems actually really nice yeah, in this I... position. Um, what else? Uh, I kind of don't like e6. C six might be all right, mm -hmm. maybe. I don't know. I I E six can yeah. go in E six can can bad. yeah. I I I think I prefer uh prefer like Queen C seven over E six, but I wouldn't blame a student of mine to play E six because keep in mind that all of those Queen A five problems can still happen. But of course, if E six gets played. Um, you just have to understand that your opponent is going to play queen to c5, and they will try to stop your queen yeah. from going to a5. So it's, uh, but of course, if your opponent plays like queen d6 after e6, then we we we, we just win a pawn on e5. Um, yep. And it is pretty, pretty good. Uh, yeah, pretty so good. like, all right, so... 
queen c7 e6 um I mean, I guess you could castle. Um, but uh, I don't know. Like, if it's a choice between e6 and castling, I think I might prefer e6. Um, like, if you're, if you're worried about the pawn on, F, on f7. Um, uh, I guess you could do a... It should be seven. It's interesting. Yeah, it should be seven. Yep. But it might. I don't know. I'd kind of want the uh, uh, the bishop on f one to be somewhere Move. else if we're going to yeah. do bishop to c seven or b seven. You know that that's know. that's that's a really that's a really good point. Um, because like if we, for example, um, if we castled, say, um, because uh, castle, I believe castling option yeah. um mm -hmm. if we castle here then for sure it would be like an instigation like bishop ends up moving out then you can just quickly grab that pawn so i understand what yeah. you mean you if you play bishop yeah. b7 right away then you um There's then, no then they can it. see then they can see that two pawn is there. yeah yeah there's no, there's, it doesn't have any real bite to it right now. I really like queen c7. Sorry. Sorry. It's hard to, it's hard to. I, I, uh, I like, I like, I like queen, I like queen c7 um, as well, personally. Uh, queen c7, um, seven, seven, seven. I, I really like queen c7 because it, it, it also kind of, uh, it also kind of, it might bait out that bishop. Uh, allowing us to go uh bishop b7 mm -hmm. um although i guess i guess with that bishop oh no no it it does yeah like if if he played bishop prevents... c4 right now then we would castle and then on the next turn we have bishop b7 well they they might um he might castle in return though like do we want to castle before we do that i guess we do i guess we'd have to cuz it's attacking the f7 pawn yeah yeah. I guess I still I although I guess I still even if they do castle, I think I still do like Bishop B seven. Um harassing the Queen and then um taking focus away from the uh or uh, not taking uh, putting focus on uh that side of the board with those diagonals um making that pawn potentially weaker yeah yeah f1 yeah they don't want to now keep in mind that this pawn i don't know is it that to capture i think bishop d3 Uh, I don't know, I like that. Like you can put, you can make forceful moves. Like especially after F four, you can make. It, it is. No, you're right. That's true. No, that no, no. no, 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 no. I, no, no, no. I, I'm just like I'm just I'm just thinking. Uh, I'm kind of curious in terms of, um, because but, but, because I think I would probably capture it in an actual game and then just play Queen A four and then I. Well, well, what I mean. What I mean though is like I think there are other moves that are forceful. Mm -hmm. Like I think you can, I think you can capture that pawn later. It, it is a forceful move, but I think there are other forceful moves that you can make that bishop still B7. let you capture. Yeah, bishop b seven, for instance. Um, uh, e six, um, for instance. Um, like I, I don't know. Like f four seems like it's problematic. Um. For for white, I mean, it, it protects that pawn, but I think it it takes away of several options. Um, yeah, so so I I just mean we don't have to take that pawn right away, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. No, the computer um 
prefers not to, but the computer actually prefers castling it. No I, guess it's, I guess it it's be, I guess it's because uh, you're uh, it's it's with your idea, by the way, that you're 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 taking advantage of the fact that this bishop can't move or shouldn't move per se, right? So in this position, Ooh, yeah, that's you would a good point. castle. So after castling, um, they don't even have bishop c4 anymore to do like that threatening kind of like move. You, I, I mean, at the same time, we always had e6. But point is that mm -hmm. like point is that now. Now they have to do something, uh, maybe get the queen off of that diagonal. Um, <laughs> but, but even with really... the queen off the diagonal, that rook is still on that diagonal. So I don't know. I don't know. I still, yeah, yeah no, this is, this is, continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, I just find it interesting. Um, so there is a very, there's, there's basically no difference between bishop b7 and castle. But if I was to choose between the two, I think I would choose castle. No, no, I, I, I think I agree because um, White, White has got some problems that they have to deal with and uh, protecting that F7 pawn is pretty good at this point. Like We don't have any immediate threats um, aside from that. Uh, yeah, we don't have any immediate threats at the moment and we have a lot of different options available to us. So, yeah. Oh, White, White is actually really passive in this position. It's strange because... Their pieces are so far advanced. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh quite interesting. Yeah, so see this this is what's uh uh what I like about this uh sacrificing of the pawn. Um, because there are some variations obviously that you don't get your pawn back for quite some time, but you feel like mm -hmm. you have a decent amount of compensation for that loss of a like, I mean, in this position, I would castle, but still, like, right? Um, you have many chances of still winning a, a, a pawn. So, well, I mean, let me do castle, and I think c3. At least if I was to play white, and if my c3 position is already kind of, like, you know, I can't castle, I'd probably play c3 in this position and be kind of on... So Bishop yeah, no, I, I agree. C3 seems good. I, I, it doesn't fix all the problems, though, unfortunately, for white. So, um... No, and also keep in mind, um, I know that this pawn on a7 is, uh, is protected at the moment, but, like, for example, um, what's good to always remember about the pawn on a7 is that even if the queens get traded off, the pawn on a7 might never be in danger because you always have rook a8 and capture this pawn in return, which actually might be really good in terms of like trying to make sure that your opponent doesn't have like a pass pawn or anything. Um, in oh, that's nice. Uh, no, I yeah. mean, they will have the pass pawn on the b file. However, um, that will make it, I think, easier for us to gang up on um, with our bishop on g7 and then our other rook kind of that's going to be coming in a little bit later as well. Mm -hmm. um, pass. Yep, castle, queen to five. Uh, queen to c5. That's interesting. Interesting. That, 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 yeah, I know. Uh, I think it's just because because they uh, it's moving the queen off of that diagonal. Mm. And if we capture, then the bishop's going to be forking both of our oh. weak pawns. Yeah. <laughs> An interesting move, but we don't have to capture it, do we? Uh, I, uh, we don't, um, but we do have to protect it uh, somehow, um, I think. I'm not, I'm not too worried. If I'm not too worried about the e7 pawn. I think it's just because, um, I don't know. No, I mean, the, we we have to. The queen is hanging. Right oh no now, no no! I know that the queen is hanging. Uh, I of <laughs> course moving the queen. I just mean that uh, that I'm more worried about queen takes a7 because queen b7 is the only thing that I see right now. Uh, queen b7. But what happens after queen b7? Maybe after queen takes a7, maybe there is. trade and do rook a8 like i like or 
Oh no, I was I was I was thinking about this move, but man, I really really uh okay. Oh, that's no, actually oh, that's I see I that. Guess. Oh. I guess it's because you can play bishop a6 later and do a discovered attack. I think that's kind of like the idea behind it. So if queen a queen e4 captures, oh, then the bishop bishop's hanging, but I was also thinking that there is bishop a6 after. Yeah, so I think after queen if queen captures, queen takes e3, bishop okay. e2, mm. bishop e6. Nice. Oh, ah, that's nasty. All right, so that can't take that rook then. Um, yep. All right. <laughs> Uh, can the uh can he still take the pawn? No, can't take the pawn. Um, uh, if if capture the pawn and queen takes, it's basically capturing the pawn would allow queen e four. Yeah. Can't yeah uh, can't really take either of those pawns then. Um, from this position, it's kind of. Oh, right, the bishop's stink still can't move. I was thinking, if the queen's on e4, can we move the bishop out to... Uh, can we move the bishop out to uh, d3 to attack, but then that pawn on g2 is in trouble. So, kind of like you're sacrificing a pawn, but it seems like the, the bishop is... Okay, I don't... What... Uh huh. I, I don't, don't know, know after, what after queen in this position. After queen b seven, I like. I mean, I I do not know what the best move is for white. Uh, I guess they're recommending king f two. King f two. It. I would makes, never. Makes, I makes, would not. It makes some sense because you're trying to protect the. Pawn on g2, and you're protecting the bishop on e3, so you're kind of stopping that queen e4 stuff. And no, no, I, I get it. I just, don't it's just know if like I would it. never have thought of it. Yeah, I never would have thought of it, and uh, it feels very bad. Yeah, <laughs> like if I was white, if I was playing white, I would not feel good doing that. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, king f2. But even after king f2, I, I, I like, I, I really like this sacrifice. It's nice. Um, the sacrifice is nice because it, it just allows. Takes d6. Yeah, I don't know. This uh, this position is very scary for white, in my opinion. Um, like, we can't play out the whole entire game. Like, this is, you know, this is like sure. 16 moves into the, mm -hmm. the opening. Like, this is, at this point, it's basically game. Um, game. Right, right, middle game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If queen takes, yeah. uh, they, they still, um, still have an interesting idea of playing queen to e4 geez that's beautiful like really you're sacrificing you're still sacrificing your um your pawns <laughs> left and right well the rook is hanging too but so it's oh it's not hanging it's because queen takes and you get this one ah mm -hmm. okay yep okay i no, i missed that like i'm just telling that to myself um yeah queen takes e2 okay interesting and actually, after that, uh, another pawn right. probably is going to fall as well, right? So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. For sure, with like the, uh, the pressure on B two as well. Um, yep. Okay. Wowzers. Yeah. So. This is there are a lot of really good variations for black. That's kind of great. Um. All right. Continue. Exactly. Sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I'm thinking. Add new chapter. Oh, you actually have an empty position. Oh, that just means you mean where there are no pieces. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> what I was like thinking. 
Um, it would actually be really interesting if the studies did have like a chapter where it could just be text-based, especially if you're doing like an introduction to an opening or something, like you can write a whole entire essay about it, but, um, but I mean, you could just make comments on moves and stuff, but, um, but anyways, True. okay. Mainline, uh, I believe by the way, B3, I'm pretty sure B3 instead of Rook, uh, is, is worse, but, um, we'll have a reminder. Okay. Let's just start from the, the beginning. I'll, it's, this is how my dad would always, um, we'd always no, start no, you're from good. the very beginning. No, no, this is good. I like this. I like, oops, I need to take. <clears throat> And then whoop. all right, and here, uh, like this is the position, right? Uh, it's your um, turn. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. This is this is the start of the of of that variation. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Do we still want to? Do we still want to? We're still doing uh, rook to b eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're just gonna do b three this time. Is Got it. it. All right. Um, except you can you can already kind of understand why this might be potentially be, but you know what? It might not be Do so we? bad in terms of because uh, then the pieces are on light squares. But um, but I there's something about B three that I definitely don't like because it's opening up that diagonal. Yeah, and I kind of want to kick the queen off immediately, uh, either with. I kind of want to go e6 now. Um like even before like queen to c7. I want to get that queen uh off of that line if I can. The there's um, only so one maybe. there's only one problem though is that white always has queen c5. Still go there. He, so if as long as he still has that move for me is I wonder okay um and do we still have to go queen c7 immediately? I mean, it's not, it's like, like queen c7 is probably still a really good move. I just mm -hmm. gives them the, it gives them the opportunity to move that rook off of that. Diagonal. Okay. So there's a really interesting, look, there's a really interesting variation here. Um, uh, bishop b7. So I know. No, no, I, I, no, I was looking at that too. I was looking at that too. Yeah. yeah. That so makes sense. with bishop b7, because now. I don't even I don't even understand uh, the com the computer is even just simply recommending computer simply recommending in this position to play queen to d2 like they're like okay we don't care about that pawn on e5 okay okay don't understand um, it is it uh, okay queen d2 the bishop <clears throat> takes e5 then we get our pawn back pretty happy about that. And we're more active. Uh, so queen d2 disappeared off of my board for, for okay. white. Um, like right now it's doing, it's it's recommending, oh no, there it's back again. It's back again. All right, let me give it a second to think. Um, it thinks queen d2 and queen c5 are both equal right now. Okay, for me, uh, it's it's queen d2 and queen four, but I'm just at uh, 20. Uh, 27 it likes rook c8 queen a5 actually now it doesn't like uh okay now we're back to queen d4 queen d2 queen c5 i don't like queen d4 though queen d4 just seems like you're signing queen d4 um is a move that i probably wouldn't have really considered i think as white because you're placing your queen on the same Terrible diagonal. Yeah. Terrible diagonal, exactly. I do understand that white has the chance of playing f4 and defending. But like, even a move, like, uh, it kind of sucks that, um, well, maybe that's why, uh, maybe that's why castling was also an option. Because in this position, um, if the queen goes to d4, 
my first initial response is to play d6 because putting pressure on the pin or i guess queen a5 could work here yeah queen a5 works fine queen a5 works but for me like queen d4 doesn't wouldn't even be a potential thought is simply because there is like d6 yeah i don't I mean, I, yeah, 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 I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, I guess queen d4 continues to protect that pawn. Um, yeah. But I guess we can't attack it immediately. I don't know. It just seems like. See, the idea is queen a5, bishop goes to uh, Now queen takes e5. Oh, now, now it's switching. Like, now it's saying queen seven, I guess not to go great. I mean, do you get a pawn out of it? No, no, no. I, uh, you get, you get back to be equal. I just, yeah, I don't know. Uh, no, I, I definitely, uh, I I think that this is a good endgame position to, to, to definitely get into. Um, uh, and then I think it's what's really important is maybe to play d5 at some point, uh, just that your opponent doesn't have really, really nice pawn structure. So I was just thinking maybe after queen takes, um, then if the rook goes, maybe we can play like d5. At least that that would be that I would be thinking about. It uh, seems like a pretty good castle. position for black. That makes sense. Um... No, but this is still like honestly, if if black gets into a variation where it's equal, that's already a good thing. No, no, this this does not look terrible for black at all. I like it. Um, no, but but I understand that. And I like D five a lot too. If if you want to if you want to keep like the tension going, then I definitely recommend to just play Queen C seven though. Yes, Queen C seven. No, that, that makes this. I like that. That makes sense. Yeah. F four. And but, and if Rook goes Rook goes to C one, then that's a really scary move. Yeah. For, uh yeah. So like, here F four, I believe, has to be played. Um. Gosh, it really sucks that I can't play like d6 right now because you know the queen's on c7. Sure. But, not having. Uh, are we. Can we not just snatch up the other pawn though? Like, are we. Queen takes c2, yes, we can. Or castle. Yeah, I don't know. This this position is just like so quite nice, uh, in my opinion. It's quite, quite nice. If queen takes c2, queen takes a7. Uh, maybe castle after. Um, yeah, you're really, really just one. Oh, that's like having that queen up there is really scary. Boy. Yeah, and then there's always chances uh, of getting the queen to e4 as well. Yeah. <clears throat> and actually, after queen takes a7, I. Uh... Yeah, I don't I mean, I guess she'd castle to. I guess she castle first to connect the rooks, uh, to make the a seven like the pawn in a seven taking the pawn in a seven not be such a bad issue. But, yeah. I think uh, so. When it comes to getting the capture the pawn captured on a seven, I know that it's can be scary, like allowing your opponent to have two pass pawns, but because they are so far away and we have such an attack, they just don't have enough time to take advantage of any of that so uh. well yeah but also you like right now the white cannot castle on the king side right yeah he can't because uh, he loses and, the pawn on g2 and then he probably won't be able to castle anywhere he loses yep um no i mean obviously he can theoretically castle no no i'm on with the queen with side you. right yeah. but I don't no know. no i'm with you but but if he is going to castle he's going to castle on the queen side and then like um rook c8 
threatening. Yeah, no, there's just like all like it's just a, there's a lot of problems. Um, yeah. Like he has the Fianchetto uh, setup without a, the bishop there, so it's like, and then that uh, Seapont's kind of gonna be gone. Like, I don't know. This seems yeah. like a bad position for white. I don't and like. I mean, it for eventually d six is also gonna be played. It's just right now it doesn't necessarily work. Um. Oh, actually. Wait. Oh, yeah. It doesn't. Sorry. Um. Oh, maybe. Can't capture. Queen a five check. <clears throat> oh my gosh. No, but then there's bishop queen a five check. You know what? I I think it's bishop b five. Kind of. Well, um, there you go. Yeah. Oh uh, wait. No, there's no queen a five check. Oh, you're right. right. There is no. Yeah. Sorry. The bishop's on d two. Sorry. You're right. Then yeah. I can't even play play that. Um. Yeah, because see, when he captures, even though his queen is in danger, my queen's in danger. So if I capture his queen, then he captures mine, and then now his rook is in danger, but my rook is in danger, and I just don't really. He's also threatening. Like that. Yeah, no, that's not so great. Yeah, let's not let's not go d six. Yeah, no, just castle, oh, no. just castle oh. here, or just capture on d two. So castle or queen d two. Um, I would just. Kind of be careful, but at the same time, now that the bishop's on b7, we even have possibilities of trading queens if we really, uh, if we really uh, feel like it. We do. Before or something like that. This is. Good. Yeah, it's like this. quite good. You know, move fourteen. Nice. Okay. Um, let's take a look at. Uh, okay, so we did rook b one. Bishop takes a seven. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the main line is definitely the the most important to take a look at is bishop c four. When they threaten checkmate, and then the thing is that the pawn. I remember. I I believe the pawn on b two at that point is actually going to be. Um. Uh, poisoned, because then the rook will get into trouble. Yep. All right. I believe. Okay. Start from the beginning again. Good. Okay. So bishop c4. Um, this is the um, the most appropriate line because it does give uh, some chances, more chances for white. And and if you if you notice in the previous variations, if white does not take the chance, kind of like now to play bishop c4, then they won't mm -hmm. be able to later on. Because at least with bishop c4, they'll be able to castle later, right? Because the bishop's yes. not on f1, <laughs> so it does make things a lot different. And I believe capturing on b2, our rook gets trapped with bishop to b3, so yeah. I yeah, this, is, this, this looks much better for white. Um, so I guess castling is one option, and also I think is e6 an option here? Um, it looks like yes. Yeah, e e six e six is definitely definitely an option. Um, um I don't. Uh, I guess you could. No, I think. Um, yeah, there's e six and there's castle. Like those those I think are the the two um, basically options here. Uh, uh, castling is more um, is more common. Um, I guess which is. Kind of like e6. I, I I prefer to castle as late as I can, as you know. Mm 
I prefer e6, but we could do like castling here is is a nice strong move. Yeah, no, I don't they're dislike both it. Uh, honestly they're 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 both fine. I just think um at that point it it also depends on uh kind of like preference. Yeah. Um as well. So Bishop C four. Okay, so uh, we'll 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 take a look at uh, we'll take a look at both because you can choose yep. between which one to play. So let's uh, let's start off with E six first because it's right. um, the one that you like. So in this position, of course, uh, the theme is very very similar in terms of if the queen gets off of the fifth rank, we have Queen A five, we win the pawn on E five, and I'm really mm -hmm. happy with the position. Like, oh yeah, really, really happy, um, because especially even if he, even if uh, like the queen goes or like the bishop goes down to d two, like when um, like for example here, queen goes to d two d d d six, attacking the rook, they think, oh, now the rook's gonna have to move or to a eight or capture this pawn and trap itself, but then you say no, queen a five. <laughs> the reason why I'm just saying that you have to be somewhat aware is just making sure that this is actually a check. Like in this case, the queen's in danger, mm -hmm. but you have to just make sure that there's no bishop c3. You don't understand how many times like, right. I've just accidentally uh, made silly moves like that and my opponent play bishop c3 and then they win the bishop um, uh, behind. So um, yeah, bishop goes to d2 and then we just play queen takes e5 check. Yeah, we go into... Uh, we go into an end game, but like as you can see now, there's actually really big trouble with the pawn on b2. Yeah. Really, really big trouble. Uh, c3 can't help. B3 can't help. No, it can't. No, this is this is all this is all really good for black. Jeez. Yep. Um. Well, if I were playing white, I'd wonder what the hell happened. <laughs> uh, just, just don't go. Just uh, maybe. Don't go into the um, into the variation down a pawn. Maybe when knight goes to d5, maybe go somewhere else. Or just don't play knight takes c6. Because really the only reason why people would play knight takes c6 earlier on, right, um, mm -hmm. here, in this position, is to play e5. But otherwise, trading off this good knight, they're both good knights, but the white knight is slightly um, more. It's slightly, slightly better, yeah. It's slightly better. So in this position, like, I mean, if your opponent trades and doesn't play e5, then that's just great. And I, I mean, uh, but but I wouldn't really, yeah. There's really only one reason why someone would capture here. It was to, it would be to play e5. Okay. It really well, doesn't. Yeah. So far, it hasn't really worked out well for White doing that. Um, it's just interesting. Queen C5 has to be played. Uh, queen D2, by the way, does not... Ch it might stop Queen A5 check, but it doesn't stop protecting... Uh, it stops protecting the pawn on E5 instead. So. Yeah, we just we just go up a pawn, yeah. <clears throat> so that's pretty still pretty good Yeah. for, uh, for black. <clears throat> One second. Yeah, no worries. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, queen goes to c5. Um, okay, so it's protecting a lot of things right now. It's protecting yeah. against queen a5, it's protecting against... Um, so we can't play rook takes b two because we will get our rook trapped with bishop two. Uh, b. Sure, but I'm I'm wondering if we can't like the queen is definitely overloaded at this point. I'm wondering if we yes, can't take yes. advantage of that somehow. Um, maybe bringing out the the bishop and then getting the rook involved, like in a different way, might be best. Well, I mean that's. <laughs> Very sneaky. Uh, yeah, because like rook c8. Because um, at the moment, we can't castle. 
Is that the moment where we can't castle? We can't play queen c7. We can't play queen b6. Well, we I guess we kind of can't couldn't ever play queen b6 because of the bishop. But we had a uh, sure. queen, queen c7. <laughs> so these two are not an option. This is not an option. Um, castling is not an option. So what are we also kind of like left to do at this point? I guess like pushing the a pawn, or I think. Yeah, no, I like uh, I like bishop. B seven better. Bishop B seven. Um, Bishop B seven is <clears throat> so he's probably going to castle or something, but um, that makes sense. Castle. But that uh, castling FCA, seems yeah. not great in this position. But all right. Uh, eight. Uh, Bishop B four. So basically, basically in this position. Um, white, but but now like what about like a move like queen c seven now the pawn yeah so eventually eventually white is going to have to lose one of their pawns it's just unavoidable because our um our pieces are just really really nice uh, hanging okay. up yeah okay we just have to be oh uh, uh, careful hold about on G5. can we oh no no this makes sense all right uh. Uh, do you have be careful idea? about bishop no 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 i just i just wanted i was catching up just catching up oh, okay. uh we have to be careful about bishop b5 is that what you're saying um bishop, you said? G, bishop g5 g5 um I wonder oh why does yeah that... um why is that... oh uh okay uh, it's funny the computer doesn't even care like bishop f8 Bishop F eight is really good. Well, I actually, it, I like Bishop F F eight right now. Of course, um, it makes right. Of course, it makes sense because, like, now this bishop is in danger. Oh yeah, well, actually, that bishop is in danger anyway right now, isn't it? Like well, that bishop is. Yes, that is correct. But when Bishop G five gets played, uh, it threatens checkmate, checkmate more... sure. But no, no, for sure. But um, this is easy to defend against, right? So yeah. bishop f8. Queen b3. So he puts he keeps the the tension on this one, um. But I mean, we could even maybe move the bishop. I. What about just like bishop captures the pawn actually? Because if we capture the bishop on c4 right now, right, white would capture our bishop on b6. No, I like that. Yeah, capture, take, capture, 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 and then we're up. Then we're back to equal, except we also get the pawn. No, we don't get the pawn on c five. It's too bad. That's all right. Um... Yeah, bishop. Yeah, bishop. Yeah, I would definitely. Not hundred percent. Yeah, kick, 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 coup is just better for black. You win this pawn, and then now your pieces are just really active, and the king is really. Uh, oh yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> oh wait, um. How do we win that pawn? What am I missing? Um, so after king takes, uh -huh. two, two queen takes. Oh, I don't know why. Why is the capturing? On well, because we instead of on c four. Oh, it's because there's going to be a check. Oh, that's that's really nice actually. So instead of capturing the bishop here, <clears throat> um. Uh -huh. Uh, there's a really interesting move. Queen takes e5, and when the bishop moves away, you have queen e4 check, and then you win the bishop. You just get another pawn out of it. I see. Oh, that's see. really pretty. It's really pretty, actually. Because, who knows, I, I may have probably potentially captured on c4 for 
as a mistake. But yeah, queen takes e5 in this position. Queen takes e5. I see. That makes a lot of sense. Pawn goes. <clears throat> Even if like pawn goes to f4, you just play f4. And then get. You get, you get an extra. Uh... Here, rook f3. Yeah, this, I don't know. This, this is just so good for. <laughs> it is. So, wow. All so right. The reason, so from my understanding with this bishop c4 variation, with this bishop c4 variation that just white has to play very, very precisely to get an, to equalize. They have to play very, very precisely to be able to equalize, which is, I believe, one of the variations where, you know, there was a variation where we tr uh, we did, like, the queen trade or something. Maybe that mm -hmm. was one of the variations that would have been okay for white because, um, because then it's just equal, and um, it could be anyone's game at that point. I just can't remember at this point. Um, I was just wondering, uh, do you want to, how about we do uh, one practice game? Just, uh, I know that not all the variations, but I also don't expect uh, too many people playing absolute mainline variations. Um, uh, sure, but not on, not recorded, right? Okay, yeah, that's not a problem. Okay, I will uh, stop the recording. I will see you guys uh, later. I hope you enjoyed the Lessons with Wayne number three. It has been productive. Bye.